we talk about spend cubes and then that scares people because there are still a lot of procurement departments out there that have nothing. They're literally working off of Excel spreadsheets. And so to jump from a spreadsheet to that is a huge, massive jump and maybe a bit too much for some people. So I would say, yeah. you know, if you want to start really basically classify your suppliers by one or two levels, like just really basic, just so you can get an idea of how much spend you actually have. Thanks so much for joining another edition of the never ending climb for a stronger supply chain and procurement for companies running SAP. Today we have Susan Walsh. She is Hi. the mistress of data, the author of Between the Spreadsheets and the Classification Guru, multiple award winner from Data IQ 100, uh, 100 and Data Champion. Susan, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Right on. So, you know, there's a lot of trends in supporting procurement and with procurement and how to help procurement, how to work with procurement. And there's some voices that are out there that aren't following some of the, I guess we'll just call them generally accepted rules of treating other people respectfully. Um, and there's some wonderful people out there that are sharing some messages around how to bring some of that positivity, some of the supportiveness back to that relationship between procurement and the rest of the business or between procurement yeah. and the vendors. And procurement is not always perfect themselves, but what are you seeing there? What do you love and what do you want to encourage? I think I would love the rest of the business to see what I see from procurement people, which is a sense of fun, really warm, exceptional knowledge, um, real benefits. Sometimes I think they're seen as a threat, but I also think that maybe they need to kind of improve their internal relationships and maybe net like we talk a lot about external networking, but what about internal networking too? I want them to go and shout about all the amazing things they're doing and how they can help their colleagues. That is beautiful. That is, that is so beautiful. And I think bringing a little bit more support to the team, um, you know, you catch more flies with honey than some of the other stuff. Yeah. There's quite a few people that sometimes need a little reminder. It's about some of the inside procurement that could use a reminder in the way they deal with vendors. But for the most part, I think just, generally keeping that in mind goes a really really long way i think you know with that one of the things that's tricky is figuring out what's what in procurement and classification is a term that gets thrown around and i think there's a lot of people that it's probably fair to say classification does not mean what they think it means but yeah. what is classification susan yeah I call it classification, some people call it categorization, um, but basically what you're doing with it is you're taking a, a taxonomy or a category tree, which has normally got one to maybe four levels, and you're categorizing everything you have spent with your suppliers so that you can look at uh, an overall picture of um, how much spend per category, how many suppliers you have per category, if you can go into lots of detail, you can start to look at price comparisons per item from different suppliers. Um, you can look at number of invoices per supplier, uh, the payment terms, days to pay, uh, all those kinds of things. And look at, you know, maybe consolidating your suppliers, maybe negotiating better rates with the, the suppliers that you want to keep it's a real window into what's going on in your business and and even things like fraud um or rogue spending can be hidden in there if you're not looking and, and people are relying on that to get away with the things that they shouldn't be doing it's the it's the organizing the dollars organizing the spend so you can compare things so you can actually evaluate it so you can actually analyze it like if you want to have a spend cube and analyze your spend and have some analytics around your procurement it's almost meaningless to do that if you don't have yeah. some solid classification and categorization to, to rely on right yeah but i think also you know we talk about spend cubes and then that scares people because there are still a lot of procurement departments out there that have nothing 
they're literally working off of Excel spreadsheets. And so to jump from a spreadsheet to that is a huge, massive jump and maybe a bit too much for some people. So I would say, yeah. you know, if you want to start really basically classify your suppliers by one or two levels, like just really basic, just so you can get an idea of how much spend you actually have, because I can guarantee you now, whatever you think you're spending, you're not. Um, a great example would be a, a project we worked on last summer. The client thought they had spent um, X amount of money on legal services. Once we reclassified their data, uh, it was 40% higher. That's a huge difference. You know, there was some legal spend sitting in construction, in HR, in professional service, like different marketing, like lots of categories that shouldn't have been in. And that was just one service. There were, there were more examples like that. So, you know, just relying on your GL codes or what finance tells you is not always what it's going to be because, you know, as we know, finance and procurement look at it, things for the very different lens. They sure do. They sure do. And, and, you know, I think you hit something really, really important. And that, that's kind of along that, that maturity continuum of early stage, just getting going and, you know, significantly more mature getting into fine tuning and, you know, next level stuff that feels like space shuttle kind of things. Um, yeah. We're putting somebody on Mars kind of things compared to, well, you know, we're still figuring out who our most important vendors are. Um, yeah. and, and we're still doing all of our reporting from a data dump into Excel. So, you know, if you think about something like, uh, we can call it some differing opinions around, some people say, well, you've got to jump straight to full UNSPC codes. And if you're not using UNSPC codes, then you're doing it wrong. And you kind of go, ah, I don't know if they're ready for that. Because no. <laughs> the change management, right? What sort of a taxonomy do you usually encourage people to move up through, like when they're just starting and then kind of a level two, maybe a level three? Well, first of all, never UNSPSC. I beg people <laughs> not to use that. Um, but it really depends on the quality of your data. So, for example, you might have staples as a supplier and all it might say is office supplies. So your taxonomy might be facilities level one, level two might be office supplies and level three might be stationary. But if you've got staples as a supplier and you have real invoice line descriptions such as pens, pencils, paper, post-it notes, sticky notes, then you can go into a lot more detail. So you could get a four or five level taxonomy with that. So firstly, it's about the quality of the data you and the detail of the data you have. What are the needs of the business? Because I know, you know, I have some clients where we could go into that detail, but all they're interested in is like level one or two. That's all they want to know about. So it really depends on what data you have and what works best for your business. But the biggest thing I would say is keep your taxonomy super simple. Um, so let's not have big, long, fancy words like the UNSPSC. You know, let's have IT not information technology services and broadcasting, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's make it chart and analytics friendly so that when you put put a chart up, the category is not longer than the bar chart itself. Um, and also try to avoid too many acronyms or internal uh, phrases and names for things. You want to build a taxonomy that anyone could come in and use and understand. Uh, and make it fit the needs of your business. And we've definitely seen uh, that sway towards that, particularly over the last few years, pretty much every project we now do where we're classifying spend data, we're building a taxonomy to. And it's to the specific needs of what that business does and what it's spending its money on, which makes a huge difference. You know, um, marketing in the UNSPAC is awful. And then there are a couple of examples where you might be able to classify two things and both might be right. So if you have multiple people classifying, it's, classifying is really subjective. So one person might put this, one person might put that. They could both be right, but then you have mixed classification. And the example that I've been giving is business cards. 
So it sits under printing services, which is what you'd expect. You know, you pay a printer for business cards, but business cards also sits under paper. So some people would put it under what the physical product is, a piece of paper. But really, I would argue that it should be under printing services because you're you're not buying a blank business card, you're buying a printed business card. But some people will argue that um, the most important thing is to keep it consistent. So if you're going to choose one option, make sure everyone's doing the same thing. I love yeah. the simplicity of that. Because that, that really gets to what good looks like. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I hear in what you're saying is part of what good looks like is making it easy to consistently classify your spend across the organization using more standard language, not trying to do five levels of SPC codes because I don't know too many people to speak in codes. Yeah. And minimize, give, yeah, minimize the chance to create mistakes and errors. You know, if yeah. you do that, then you've got a much better chance of having an easier life. So if we think about maybe the main challenges that you see people running into, I think we touched a little bit on how when somebody is trying to classify something, sometimes there's too many classification codes that are difficult to follow or distinguish, you and SBC codes. Um, you know, even for you and I, I know that going in and looking at some of the different codes and maybe you and SBC, even if you're just doing the first several digits of it, that can be a real pain. That can be a real challenge. And, and just distinguishing between two different ones is it can be overwhelming. And overwhelming means lack of clarity. Overwhelming lack of clarity means lack of velocity. And that just eats into the user experience, the compliance, the, the adoption, all of it. So, you know, other main challenges that you see people running into in either getting it set up or in, in maintaining it. Both really, um, getting funding from the business to actually invest in getting the data right is a real challenge. Most of the time, until something's gone wrong, it, they, you don't get the money for it. It's very reactive rather than proactive in most instances. Um, the other thing is that a lot of uh, companies will come and I'll fix their data and we'll give it all back nice and shiny. And then that's it. They won't maintain it. They won't look after it. And it will be back to where it was within a year because it's not being looked after or they don't have the resources to do it themselves, but they also don't have the money to outsource it. it, it you know, it can be really tricky. It's a little bit like uh, getting the house cleaned. You can pay the cleaners to come in and get it all squeaky clean, but if the habits don't change, then it's going to need the cleaners to come in in a few months and they're going to have a lot of work. If you clean your house once a week, then it's much easier to maintain. If you're doing it once a month, then you've got a bigger challenge on your hands. <laughs> Dishes are going to be growing legs. Yeah. If I think about something like, you know, things that you want people to make sure that they know you know, if you imagine somebody that watches this maybe six weeks, six months later, what are the most important things that you want them to remember about getting things set up and, and then uh, some tips to help sustain it? So first of all, I think it's really important that it's not good enough to just fix it. You have to maintain it and you have to look at it on a regular basis. Now, that might be monthly or quarterly. I would say don't leave it any more than six months. Um, it's like the house cleaning analogy. Like if you look at it small and often, then it's much easier to spot when things don't look right because you're really familiar with your data. Um, but something that you can do to help is put your data coat on, so like a jacket. So first of all, make sure your data is consistent. So everybody in your department is classifying data the same way they're inputting new suppliers the same way everyone's working to the same processes you know whether that's setting up a supplier or raising an invoice or approving a po make sure everyone's doing it the same way make sure your data uh, or your processes are organized so you know think of a wardrobe if you just throw your clothes in there 
and you go back next week and you're looking for something and it might be a bit creased, but if you've organised your wardrobe by colour, style, and it's all neatly hanging up, you can just go in and get it. And, and data is just like that as well. And then, of course, it has to be accurate as well. So define what that is within your department with whatever data you're looking at, because if it's finance, numbers have to be accurate. They have to be spot on. But if it's setting up a supplier, it might be we need these six data points and you have to have those and you have to have that information before you can set up a supplier. So once you've got your consistent, your organized, your accurate data, guess what? It's going to be trustworthy. And how often do we hear, oh, we don't trust the data? Um, so by doing that and, you know, let's face it, not everybody that works with data is a data person. So we need to make it relatable and easy for them to remember. So, you know, something like the data coat is like fun and, and memorable for them as well as, you know, people who are working with data more regularly. I love it. Data coat. And if you don't have your data coat on, time to go get it. Yeah, and, and keep it on. Yeah, keep it on keep all it year on. round. You know, you know, if you're from Newcastle, you know, you got this <laughs> idea of going out without a coat. Don't do that. At least Don't not with it. your data. No. So, <laughs> to, Susan, for you, for your team, um, if somebody is struggling with classification and getting over this for the first time or needs help getting that maintained, I know you've got your book between the spreadsheets, love the yeah. title. How would you and your team help, you know, when to call you and how to get in touch? So I think, you know, there's absolutely no harm in having a chat with us. We, I hate selling. We don't do hard selling. Um, I'm very much of the belief and opinion that, you know, come to us when you're ready and then we'll help you. But if you just want to have an, a, a chat about where you might start, what you can do, happy to have that without you getting a million emails and phone calls afterwards saying do you want to buy our services because that's not what we do um if you want an even easier start than that would be to have a look at between the spreadsheets because it shows you how you can normalize your suppliers and classify your data even build your own taxonomy and something as simple as excel you know so it doesn't have to be this huge scary task of not only learning how to classify data but then also have to learn a new tool you know we can you can do it in excel it doesn't have to be tricky so so that's what i would say and then just follow my content on linkedin because there's always something interesting going on there yep absolutely whether it's a lip sync or the latest tip or the latest award ceremony um susan yeah. thank you so very much for joining us i hope everybody has taken away a newer deeper understanding of classification and uh, thanks again for watching. This has been another edition of The Never Ending Climb for a Stronger Supply Chain and Procurement for companies running SAP. Uh, if you're looking for a great add-on for SAP, check us out. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.